All right. So here we can check out Sensel. Hi. Hey, I'm Scott from Sensel. This is our uh, force sensing haptic trackpad module. And what you'll see here is a replacement for a typical capacitive trackpad. What you'll notice is that we have full multi-touch as well as per finger force data. What that allows you to do is integrate with a haptic actuator so that you can have simulated click instead of using a mechanical dome switch. That also so this is like force touching. Yes, you, exactly. You know how much people are, how much, de how many degrees do you have? How many levels of force resolution yeah, you mean? How much you can uh, I think it's like 30,000. It's very, uh, there's a lot of... So, so any, anywhere from a little bit? Yeah, oh right, from about one gram to up to five kilograms. Yep. So there's a huge difference if I push a lot or not. Yes. So just a little bit. And so that's why the DJ is doing like music? Yeah, because force sensing integrates really well with the musical expression and things like that. And because we're using force, we're immune to water, you can use gloves, you can use any object, including this paintbrush here, to interact with your uh, input device. Uh, you can sense through different materials like this uh, brochure here. Nice. And um, we integrate very well with haptics, so you can get a simulated click here, you press it, and you can feel a vibration that simulates the collapsing of a mechanical Is it happening switch. just behind my finger, or is the whole area is vibrating? The whole area is vibrating, but it's isolated from the larger C-deck of, um, of the laptop. And I can I actually feel show it. it feels to be under my finger, but that's because it, the whole thing does. is vibrating. It does. It's a good sort of uh, touch illusion. And so actually, if you see it over here, uh, this is our touch, our trackpad module that's very thin, about three millimeters, and it uh, this would be integrated into a laptop. And in fact, this is a, um, over here you can see our haptic force sensing trackpad module that's integrated into, uh, retrofitted into a real XPS, and it, and it really works and it really has haptics. And it, in, in fact, it has force sensing integrated as well. So you can see I'm rotating around this CAD model and the rotation speed is changing. But it's not shipping, right? It's not shipping. So no. it's a modified version of something. Yeah, we, we uh, retrofit this ourselves. But you should see a um, commercially available product available um, later this year from us well, cool. in a laptop. That's going to be a very special touchpad. Right. Touch so we also have over here, real quickly, a um, this is our automotive section. And so you can see a flexible version of our sensor that's molded around a curve. And we have here a uh, curved base, a leather top surface, and our sensor is a very thin film in between these two materials. And what you'll notice here is that we have that same nice force sensing data, the same interaction with any object, and in fact, if I could just grab this glove, you can sense with even very thick winter gloves. So you can imagine, you know, sliding buttons, sliders, gestures for uh, the interior of cars with more design freedom and using more natural materials. Do you have to calibrate anything based on the material? Or are you just uh, integrated with anything? There's no need to calibrate anything. There, there would be a calibration, but that's pretty standard for pretty much all touch sensors in terms of calibrating force to um, the output. Um, here we have uh, our water demo, which shows the influence of water on capacitive touch. This is, uh, I believe, an iPhone 10, And you can see it's the display is pretty much non-responsive. I can't hit OK here. Um, it occasionally will do something funny, uh, even when my I'm not touching it. Uh, but this is our touch sensor integrated actually behind a flexible OLED display. And what you'll see is it's very responsive. You still have um, haptics as well integrated into here. And you have no problem uh, sensing multi-touch even under heavy rain. And in fact, you can even immerse the entire sensor in water. And uh, well, I just, there we go. Now we're back to the demo. And, oh, no. Well, where's my demo? Hopefully it's well, fully waterproof. I'll try that one later. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> so, so um, are you kind of like the modern resistive touch? We are, I would say, the next generation of resistive touch, the evolution of resistive touch. What in... resistive should have become? Yeah, it's exactly. Coming now. Exactly. Is it, does it make sense to be hybrid with a capacitive? 
Um, or you are replacing the whole capacity. Potentially, you, we can replace it completely. Uh, we can also combine with it. Maybe. Um, so, if you want to go over here, I can show you uh, yeah. our prototype for replacing the buttons on a, the edges of a smartphone. Um, pardon me. Sorry. Nice. So over here, yeah, we have a. Um, smartphone prototype in partnership with Visionox. Um, you'll see the display is not active, that's simply because um, the display isn't working on this and we make the touch sensor, we don't make the actual phone, okay? We have the... Visionox the, makes displays. Visionox makes displays. And the uh, output that would be on the display is up here on the computer. So what we have here is just a visualizer of the data. So you can see it can sense my grip here. I'm holding it in my right hand. It's seeing the pressure from my fingers and from my thumb. So you can tell holding it in my right hand, holding it in my left hand, and so on. Whoa. Now what does that let us do? It lets us completely eliminate the physical button. So we have a nice clean line here, a lot more design freedom. Also, more waterproofing, right? And so I can take my finger here and I can change the volume, for example. And I can do that without any physical buttons. I can, I can turn the power on and off, for example. If I get a call, it's vibrating, I can squeeze to silence. That's already available in phones today. Um, but our higher resolution lets us do reprogrammable buttons. See now, if I'm a left-handed user, I can, I can change the volume on with my left hand. And these are all reprogrammable because the entire side of the phone on both sides has integrated touch sensors. Another awesome application here is for a camera. So let's say I'm zooming in, I want to focus. Now you can use it kind of like a DSLR. You can do a half press and you see how this is getting a little bit... If I do a half press, boom, it snaps into focus. And then if I press harder, boom, it takes a picture, okay? Now I put the phone in my pocket, I take it out, and I happen to hold it in the other orientation. Who hasn't, who hasn't done that, right? So now it, the shutter is still in the upper right-hand corner because we can sense which direction the phone is and we can automatically adapt the position of the camera shutter to which orientation you're holding the phone. So it makes it a lot more friendly to use than a physical button. Nice. So this is a very special for the smartphone market. How I think soon so. are you out with this? Yeah. It's stuff like uh, Sensel has been doing a lot of cool prototypes so far, right? But uh, you also shipping? You shipping this, right? Yes, that's right. So our consumer product that's available to the public yeah. today on Sensel.com is uh, the Sensel Morph. So that's this sensor right here. Underneath this black surface, there are about 20,000 individual pressure sensors. Same data that you saw in all the previous demos, per finger uh, force data. What we can do with the Morph is we have these overlays that can change the function of the device on the fly. So because we're force sensitive, we can support things like MPE, after pressure, and all the things that you need to be expressive as a musician. So here is an example of our technology being used in an MPE uh, supported software with full after pressure, sliding, different effects, velocity sensitive, which you need in order to get the, um, the expressiveness of a musician. And if you come over here, I can show you all the different overlays we have. It looks like a seaboard. <laughs> this is actually our overlay that's in par done in partnership with Bukla Thunder. This is our newest overlay. And it's kind of a, uh, a new, or it's a <coughs> new take on an old electronic instrument uh, in a much uh, sort of smaller form factor. And you can see the power of the morph here is that uh, you can be using the device. Now, if, I'm, if I put on some headphones, I can hear what I'm doing. I have an MPC controller here. Let's say I mix a beat, right? Now, if I'm finished with it, I can throw off that overlay and I can put on the drum pad overlay. And it remaps the MIDI instrument that's presented to the computer on the fly. So, MPC controller, Bukla Thunder, drum pad, uh, and piano, uh, all in one. Not to mention that we also have a um, video editing overlay. This is specifically designed for editing uh, video in Adobe Premiere, as well as um, a keyboard overlay with actual um, uh, keys with a little bit of travel in it, uh, gaming overlay, 
and uh, the innovators overlay in which you can make your own uh, your own interface. So if you want your own keystrokes, your own macros, your own MIDI events, um, you can make your custom overlay and uh, print it out and put it on this transparent uh, this transparent overlay. So nice. Is this what um, what's happening here? Uh, can I be like uh, jamming here? Yeah, exactly. That this is the morph. This is this is an example of what you can do with the morph. Um, taking that, you can see this is kind of similar to that touch data that we were seeing earlier, but now we've mapped it to this surround sound system. So the position on the pad is mapped to the spatial audio around you, and the volume of each of the instruments is mapped to the force of each finger. So it's kind of a fun demo to show what the Morph can do, the power of our technology, and just draw people in because it's fun and easy for everyone to play. So uh, the whole day people are being DJs. Yeah, exactly. We get a lot of people coming in just Perform trying to have fun and jamming out for music. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then we try to send them over there to. You have some uh, uh, some uh, cool DJs around the world using your stuff. Yeah, I think we have actually a couple artists that are, we're featuring. Nate Hendricks is one of them, and um, I'm blanking on the other one. But uh, but uh, and then you are here to see yes with all the tech people, tech gurus or uh, tech tech companies. Right. And you want to integrate in the phones. You want to integrate in the laptops. Um, this could be happening. Right. Yeah, and there's a there's a lot of interesting applications out there, and I really hope we can get to them soon. Yeah. Where are you based? We're Company. based in Sunnyvale, California. So yeah. you're right there next to the tech people. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. It's part of Silicon Valley.